So the Arctic Fox, the Arctic Fox of the three species here, um, you notice their ears are shorter. They have a shorter snout. Uh, they're a little bit pudgier. They're shorter in height and they have a thicker winter coat and they're much nippier uh, than the other species. And I've noticed this with all Arctics. Um, Arctics also tend to get along better with their species. So you can keep larger groups of Arctics together without issues, unlike the red fox species. Arctic foxes also have the thickest winter coat of the three fox species I'm going to talk about. Okay, don't participate. <laughs> so as you see, he seems very overweight and very large, but Arctic foxes that are bred in the fur farms, which he is a captive bred fox, they actually specifically breed these foxes to be what they call loose skinned. So I could take his, his thick fluff and I could kind of stretch it out and he just has a lot of extra unnecessary skin because they have bred them in captivity to make a larger fur coat. Yes, and personally I actually think they are the smartest of the three fox species and they are the hardest to train as well. So they kind of just do their own thing and that's what I think is so smart about them. They, they don't want to learn from anybody. They are the hardest to potty train of the three foxes just nearly impossible don't even try <laughs> but you can teach them tricks you have to establish a really strong bond with the arctic fox for them to do any type of learning from you right fox foxington right the red fox species so the red fox species has more color variations than any other fox species there are over a hundred different color variations of the red fox species because they are the most well known to be bred in captivity so here we have winter and you also may notice their snouts and their ears are just a lot more canine like they really have that canine look to them um, which is a lot different than the Arctic fox species. The red fox species is the largest in height between the three fox species I'm introducing to you guys. And they're pretty intelligent animals. I would say they are a lot easier to train tricks to than any of the three fox species. Mutt, mutt, come here. Come here. Want to do tricks? For treats? Okay, hold on. I have to open this bag. My hands are cold. Oh my! Oh my! Okay, it's gonna be hard to do tricks with Mutt with Finnegan Fox here. Sit! Vixie, sit! Mutt, high five! High five! <laughs> High five! High five! No? Okay. Well, no fox ever always listens. <laughs> Hi, Finnegan. Hi. Oh my goodness, it's Finnegan Fox! It's Finnegan Fox! And this is my best friend, Finnegan Fox. He's a red fox. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's the standard look for a red fox, so he's no special type of color morph. He is just a red, red fox. Vulpus vulpus is our scientific name. Right, Finn? Right? Right? So cute, so cute. So when you see a red fox in the wild, it's going to look like a Finnegan Fox. And the males are larger than the females, typically, but there is always an exception to the rule. And Vixie is a silver. She is a color morph of the red fox. This is Nikita. She is our gray fox. Gray foxes are the only species of fox that can climb trees vertically. They're more cat-like. So what I mean by climbing trees vertically, because people have question the way I word that because they're like wait foxes climb horizontally the other ones <laughs> so what I mean is she can climb straight up that tree if she wanted to she doesn't actually know she could climb trees but she can because she's a gray fox 
but she could climb straight up that tree vertically just like a cat so they kind of hug the tree they use their nails they have really sharp nails their nails um just like cat nails right just like cat nails they can retract are you gonna let me pet you tonight huh they don't use gray foxes in the fur farms because their fur is much more coarse. They don't have soft fur like the Arctic fox and the red fox species. Right? Come here, you want a treat? She is the smallest fox species of the three we have here. Come here. Come here, here, come in the light. You're making me turn around in circles. Come on. And when the gray foxes run, they carry their tails up. If you saw that, she carried her tail like this. So <laughs> she's the only species of fox that we have here that does that. The other ones do not do that. And they have a very unique black stripe down their tail, which all gray foxes have. Another reason they don't use them in the fur farms is because their tails aren't as thick and bushy. Um, and they don't come in other colors. It's very rare for a gray fox to be born any other color except for the standard gray. Well, as the red fox species come in a hundred different colors. And she's also nocturnal. The other foxes are considered crepuscular, which are dawn and dusk animals. Nikita, come here. The gray foxes are much easier to potty train than any other fox that I've had experience with potty training, which is just the red fox and the arctic fox and her. The gray foxes tend to be way more affectionate and talkative to their owners. Nikita's a rescue, so she didn't come here until she was eh, probably about seven months old. So she was pretty wild. I had to tame her down. But every fox that comes through here is able to be tamed down. There's never a question of whether or not we can tame a fox down. Foxes are very easy to gain their trust as long as you work one-on-one -on -one with them. Right, Nikita? Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on, Nikita. Come here. She doesn't want to step in the light. Come on. Okay. All right, so there's your difference between the red fox species, the gray fox species, and the arctic fox.